Well, it's lovely to see you all again. And uh, we're joined online now, all being well, by people who are with us. Um, we've done quite a lot of this online business during this uh, time of lockdown. I don't think we all knew what Zoom was before lockdown, did we? Or maybe some of the younger people did, but um, we're all learning, aren't we, everyone? I hope you feel very welcome here. Whether you feel comfortable wearing masks or whether you're happy not wearing masks, everything's been uh, sanitised and everything, and um, you're just very, very welcome. This is a very gentle service, if, especially if you haven't been before. It's, not a, it, it, it's about holding at the very heart of all that we do, the idea that each person is known and loved by God and by yourselves, and then also we have got, taken the custom of lighting a nightlight for each person that we remember today, whether their loved ones are here or not, so that, that forms part of the service. And then um, the weather's being particularly kind to us. Um, afterwards, if you wish to, some people have started um, what's a South American custom, which is actually to take also a nightlight out in one of these jam jars and go and place it on their loved one's grave. So if you'd like to do that, you're very welcome to do that as well. We have got some tea and coffee and some cake available afterwards, which is just our little gift to you. Um, if you're happy to stay, please come and enjoy um, some simple refreshments with us afterwards. I think I've got, as best as I can, a complete list of names of everybody you want to be, to have remembered today. Um, and uh, it's really good that we're able to, to share this time together. Can everyone see an order of service, all right? Yeah, that's really good. If you find that it's all a bit too much and you need to slip out, that's absolutely fine. Can you just let one of your loved ones know that that's what you're doing? Just so that, you know, now that the uh, clocks are getting, the nights are getting, we don't want you wandering off <laughs> um, too much. But if you need your own time and space, that's absolutely fine. If you want to have a chat with me afterwards, again, that's absolutely fine. Um, and if you f some people like to just go and sit up in the chancel area, that's called the chancel, that part beyond the screen there. Um, and you, you're welcome to do that as well. Thank you to Rick for playing this afternoon. It's lovely to see you, my friend. And thank you also to the tech team and to everyone who's made this possible. Thank you. Let's just uh, bring into our hearts and minds then those we're going to remember today. And uh, as we do so, we're joined by those who are joining us online. They'll have their people that they wish to remember too. They may be joining us because their loved ones are in this list as well. Whether we're used to coming to church or not, can we just feel the, the sense of love and friendship and welcome that is around us as we share together this next hour? So we're going to begin by singing our first hymn, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. We are able to sing, and if you're happy to, would you like to stand and we'll sing together. Thank you, Rick.
practicing on my own. That's very kind of you. Would you please sit down? Thank you. There's various prayers that we're going to say together today, and uh, some of these prayers have been handed down from generation to generation. And you'll find the words that we say together in the bold type. So we meet together to remember the faithfully departed, to renew our trust and our confidence in the promises of Jesus. For the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of souls, for you uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise forever. For the darkness of this age is passing away, as your Son, Jesus Christ, the bright morning star, brings the light of life to all his saints. So give your light to all those who walk in the shadow of death, and remember in your kingdom all your faithful servants, that death may be for them the gate of life and the gateway to an ending fellowship with you. Amen. That's a very old prayer from about the fourth century. More about that later. Louise, you're very kindly going to read our Bible reading for us. Thank you, love. Comes from Job 19, 25 to 27. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last. And after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank you, love. Thanks ever so much, Louise. Today is not a time for doing great long Bible expositions, but those few verses are like one of those wonderful moments where you double-click, say, on an icon on a computer game, and you suddenly are taken up for the rest of the afternoon. I'm sure that's never happened to any of you. The point is, there's so much contained in those few verses, and yet, as best as we can be sure, they're some of the oldest parts of the Bible ever written, roughly about seven to 900 years before Christ. Probably the oldest book in the Bible. I know we think the oldest book's probably Genesis, because that's where we start, but actually this particular book called Job is one of the oldest bits of the Bible. So my point is, how in the world could Job know all this because those few verses contain such hope and if in the days and the weeks to come especially if you're struggling both now or in the future just read those verses quietly to yourself again put them somewhere safe forget this talk but just hold on to those verses almost normally Job's associated with being a, a book of doom and gloom really a bit like sort of Eeyore off of uh, you know Winnie the Pooh or something like that. He's, he's not known for full of being full of hope. And in fairness, he himself went through an enormous amount in his life. His wife died, his children died, he suffered great illness. And in the midst of everything, and almost like all the plates around him were crashing in. And some of you may have felt like this over this last year. With all those plates crashing in, he holds on to this faith. Even his best friends say, oh, what's the point, Job? Just give up. Just give up. And it may be that you're here today as somebody in your family who's sort of holding on almost by your fingertips to any sort of hope, any sort of faith, because actually everything has been so difficult. And if you are that person, I want to say to you, there is good news. There is good news in the words of Job. just want to draw your attention to a couple of things. He says, But as for me, I know my Redeemer lives. As for me, I know my Redeemer lives. Notice this isn't just a thought or an idle hope. He's taking it deep within himself. 
There's something rather beautiful about the fact that when somebody says, when, when, you, when you cut me in two, when you go to the very heart of who I am, you'll see what is there. And there is something good there. And anyone who goes through a journey of grief often finds that normally day to day, we're worried about many things, aren't we? All the superficial things. They seem important to us at the time. How dare the bank take another 10 quid off of us or whatever. But when something like you've been through happens, all those other things don't mean anything at all. Not really. And actually, you almost are screaming for the world to understand how I feel. And Job helps us to find words to place at that place. Where he says, when you cut me in through, I know that my Redeemer lives. How does he know that? I said he was born 800, 900 years before Jesus. Well, some would say he had a sort of a, a premonition that there was going to be this character called the Messiah. Others would say this goes strangely to the very heart of God. That God is the same before Jesus was born, as Jesus was born, and with all the hope of Easter, part of who he is. That's quite good news. I'm going to give you three or four bits of good news. And the good news is, if that's how he was 2,000, 3,000, or however many billion years the world has been in existence, he is the same today for you and your loved ones, and indeed all the loved ones that will come after us. Because his heart doesn't change. And his heart is that he loves you, he loves your loved ones, and he wants to, you to know that. So there's something about, and many of you I, I see around, we've shared this when we've stood outside at the graveyard, where we've pointed up at the hills, and we've said, actually, your loved ones, our loved ones' stories fit within a bigger story. The story of Bamwell, the story of this church, the story of the world. Not to get lost, but actually you're held by hands that are bigger than our own in a world that sometimes doesn't feel like that. The second thing is, Job goes on to say, he will stand on the earth. My Redeemer will stand on the earth. Now it could be that he did foresee Jesus being born in Bethlehem. We're going to be sharing that together and celebrating that at Christmas time. I know we're all worried about where we're going to get our presents from, especially this year. But actually, the very core of Christmas is the greatest present of all, which is the birth of the Messiah, the person of Jesus. A crazy, wonderful, innocent, vulnerable little baby. And for some of you who are parents here, and you're remembering your children. That's how Mary and Joseph felt when they held that baby in their hands all those years ago. But there's also a second understanding we have within the church. And I just want you to go with me for two seconds because I want you to know what the true Christian hope is. The reality is there's not a lot in the Bible about heaven which sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? Because you've come here because you're hoping and praying that your loved ones are safe in heaven. Well, strangely, the Christian hope is that there's something beyond heaven. And that idea is that your loved one and my loved ones will go through death into heaven, but then in the fullness of time will indeed go beyond heaven to come back here to earth to be united with the completion of all things. In other words, when all things are made well and all things are made new. And that's because heaven and earth are not millions of miles apart. They're two parts of the same creation. The physical and the spiritual, that which we can see and the unseen. 
I was only at the back of church this morning talking to somebody after the service this morning and they were telling me a story of how they were totally convinced that they, they had had a most remarkable series of events and circumstances that had brought the impossible together. And my point was, earth and heaven are not far apart. And we just get moments, and I hope you get moments, however long it has been since your loved ones passed, that you will find there's a touching place between earth and heaven. Don't pass them over because heaven and earth are much closer than we can imagine. Why is that important? It's important because the love that you have in your heart will be fulfilled. It can ache like anything at the moment, but the love you have in your heart will not be lost. And I do believe because God will complete all things, bring earth and heaven together, that that love will never be lost either. And indeed, you will see your loved ones again. That's a big claim. And I don't make it without looking you in the eye, but I base it on what I find here in Job and elsewhere. Strangely, there is something beyond heaven that brings all things together in love and for love. So it's not surprising then that Job goes on to say, I find this absolutely incredible and amazing to even conceive or believe. But I do believe it will happen. And it will happen because I see him. One of the things I was away with my wife this last week, and you know when it was raining. <laughs> Boy, did it rain. A couple of days off. We were, we were shacked up in a, a little sort of uh, upstairs um, apartment over, over a garage in, in downtown Lyme Regis. And it rained and it rained. And you know you put the films on, don't you? To be honest, we haven't had a chance to sit down together for quite some time. And one of the films we watched was Avatar. I haven't seen it for years. There's a new one being made, apparently. Don't worry if you've never seen it, but one of the things it says in that film is, I see you. In other words, I look into you and I discover who you really are. And I really see you. That is what God says to you and to your loved ones. I see you. And I see the love that is within you. I see the fact that you've turned out this afternoon that you've joined us online. And you know, there'll be hundreds of people watch this service over the coming days, looking for this hope, remembering their loved ones. And he sees you too. And he values you with great worth. And a bit like, I don't know whether you've ever met a famous footballer or a famous celebrity or even the Queen. But even the Queen worships Jesus. You'll see the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he'll see you. And so will your loved one. And it will be like meeting Aslan and discovering that you matter like you never thought before. So all these things mattered to Job, what, nearly 3,000 years ago. And we're sat here in Banwell, remembering our loved ones, trusting in these same promises, hoping the same hopes. Not then, in a moment, just reading out a name and coming and lighting a candle in idle hope that maybe there's something out there but in the trust and the knowledge that these promises have been held by Christians and others from century to century. And actually they matter. Why do they matter? Because we come full circle and we discover the story of Christmas all over again. And it's funny, isn't it? Even with everything else, this church will be packed at Christmas. I'm not sure people would make the connection between today and Christmas. 
but strangely for us who are here, I hope you do. I think there's more I'd like to say on that, but that's more than enough for one day. I hope you got the gist of it. What we're going to do now is just have some short prayers as we share together. I've gone and put my service down somewhere. There it is. We're going to have some short prayers together and then the Lord's Prayer. But as we read, you hear these words and we read these words, they may just be words that you've heard before or maybe they can speak into your heart. Particularly this word resurrection. Not just something that happened to Jesus but happened to all those who go before him. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who we remember before you today and those who are known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for each other here today that while we're in the midst of things we cannot fully understand, that you will help us to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And grant to us who are still on life's, our life's journey and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may indeed lead us in holiness, kindness and compassion all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, keep the living by your grace. Give resurrection to the dead. We ask this in your name, O Lord, our resurrection and our life. Amen. Would you please join with me, if, if you feel able, in the prayer that unites Christians together around the world. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, you've heard enough words from me for a moment. We're going to sing our next hymn together. It's the words of the uh, 23rd Psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd, but set to a sort of a, a, a wonderful Irish tune called St. Columba. So would you like to stand and we'll sing The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
And friends, we come to that point now where we read out the list of names and everything like that. If you need to sit down, that's absolutely fine. If you're happy to stand, then we stand as a mark of respect for everyone. And uh, we share this time together. If I could invite Kirsty and Maggie to come and join me, that would be lovely. last thing just to mention, I try and get everyone's pronunciation right, but please forgive me if I do get it slightly wrong, won't you? So turning to the centre pages. Let us remember before God those who have died, and those whom we knew, and whose memory we treasure. At the rising sun and at its, at its going down, we, we remember, remember them. them. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. And when we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. And when we reach a goal they have helped us to achieve, we remember them. And if you'd like to turn to the pages at the back of the order of service, you'll see a list of the names. We say a section each time, and then at the end of it, we say the words, This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. And we all say together, and I will raise them up at the last day. You can follow them in the order of service or on the screen. So on this important day, we remember Charlie Williams, Eunice Williams, Wilfred Sugg, Alfreda Sugg, Jean Loud, Molly Mitchell, Arthur Mitchell, Janet Sharp, Beryl Watts, and Jim Watts. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. Neil Malt, Ian Hobbs, Rachel Randall, Margaret Whittick, Joe Loud, Brian Phone, Lucy Sweet, and Jenny Lee Hall. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and, and I, I will raise, raise them up, them up at, at the, the last day. day. Tara Jane Millard, Brian Clark, Millie Steer, Jack Steer, Blair Harrison, Phyllis Pinch, John Pinch, Irene Curtis, Nancy Curtis. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing at all of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. We remember Vincent Latchman, Michael Nelson, Dominique Charles Henry, Calliope Balsan Ayapaulu White. I hope I've got that right. Daisy Evelyn Vatcher, Albert William Vatcher, Janet Brand Woodards and Harold George Woodards. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. Muriel Gardner, Betty Ramsley, Penn Ramsley, Sandy McCarthy, 
Gordon Hutchins, Wendy Hutchins, Bert Harding, Jean Anderson, Kevin Barbary, Michael Dolly, Andrea Hayes, and Derek Newton. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise Thanks them up, up at up the last day. day. Beryl Starks, Alex Cran, Kathleen Cran, Jean Strachan, Miriam Strachan. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. And the last group. We remember Betty Davies, Charlotte Wyatt, Henry James Wyatt, Robert Fry, Eileen Fry, Eileen Horton, Rodney Hewlett, James Arthur Griffin, and Eileen Lillian Griffin. This is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. Thank you guys, do you want to come with me? Thank you everyone. I find that a most moving part of the service because for some people they haven't heard their loved one's name read out like that since perhaps the day of their loved one's funeral. And it's good that those people are named and known. If you'd like to take a seat for a moment, what we're going to do now is, in a minute, Rick's very kindly going to play some music for us in the background. And when you're ready, if you would like to, we'd like to encourage you to do this if, you, if you're happy to, is if you'd like to come up, um, George and Kirsty have laid out the, these candles in a, in a lovely shape of two hearts. And then if you'd like to take a candle, we'll light your candle. Just because of the COVID type thing, if you're happy wearing a mask, that might be better. But if you go up the left-hand side to the altar, and then there's a board on the altar, and I'd like you to be able to place your candle and have as many candles as you want, and take your time, place your candle there. And it's just a personal way of us knowing that the person we wish to remember is safe in light and in love. And um, if you're happy to do that, if you, if you want somebody else to do it for you, just let us know and we'll do that for you. So it takes about four or five, maybe t a bit longer minutes, but just have your own time and space. If you go up and light the, up, up this side of the chancel, place your candle, and when you're ready, come down this side. If you want a, a candle um, to t place in, the, in a, a, a jam jar to take out to the graveside, we'll light that for you. And then um, we'll just have one final song and a prayer, and then we'll either have a cup of coffee a cup of tea or we'll go out to the graveside or whatever. Is that okay? People roughly okay about what, what we're going to do. That's lovely. Thank you, Rick. Bless you. So just come when you're ready.
But I don't know about you. Thank you, sorry. It's something so simple, but it means so much. It means so much. And we all remember our loved ones today. In that sense, we're all together. A little prayer at the bottom of those inside pages on the left-hand side. We're nearly done now. We say together, Hear us, O merciful Father, as we remember in love those whom we placed in your hands. Acknowledge, we pray, the sheep of old, lambs of your own flock, children of your own redeeming. Enfold them in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and in the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Our final hymn that we're going to sing together this afternoon is one called Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord, speaking of joy and hope. And even if you're in tears this afternoon, my hope is that something of what we've talked about, something of what we've shared, also does give you some hope as well. Shall we stand to sing one more time? Before we close with God's blessing, can I say thank you ever so much for coming. Um, as I say, please feel you can come and collect a, a candle in a jar if you'd like to, to take out to your loved one's grave, if you'd like to do that. Please come and have a cup of coffee with us, a cup of tea afterwards. It's just lovely to see people who've travelled many miles to be here. Some are remembering parents, some are remembering partners, some are remembering children. And it's just lovely that you've all gathered together today. There are those also who will be remembering those who have not been able to even be born. And uh, that's something we care a lot about here. So you're just all very welcome. Thank you. Should we share these words? I know it's not in italics, but there's some words at the bottom of the page called the blessing. Should we share these words together? The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
Make each of us gracious in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Tech Team. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Louise. Bless you for reading. Thank you so much for being here. Do take time um, if you want to be still or whatever, or if you want to go up in the chancel just to sit for a bit, that's fine. If you want to come and have a cup of tea, that would also be lovely. Thank you. Thanks, mate.